In this video, I'm going to talk about how to minimize or remove LED screen artifacts in the production stage. The clip is quite long because, as I was researching this topic, I realized that it's worth knowing a bit about how LED screens work and what the parameters given by the manufacturers mean in order to be able to make an informed choice when renting LED panels for a shot. The choice of panels itself can mean that you don't really get any artifacts at all. Before talking about the artifacts encountered when shooting on LED screens, I'm going to go a bit into why we care about LED screens and why it's not necessarily better to just shoot on a green or blue screen. Here are some of the advantages of LED screens. They create a more immersive experience for the actors. They contribute to better lighting of the whole set. They create real reflections on objects and actors. They allow for faster shooting. They allow for shorter VFX time. LED stands for light emitting diode. It produces color light when it has a particular voltage applied to it. An LED display contains many LED pixels that are placed close together. The standard build, or rather old build nowadays, of a pixel module consists of individual red, green, and blue LEDs. This build is called direct inline packaging, or DIP technology. There are newer ways of packaging a pixel, such as the SMD LED, which refers to surface mount technology. This LED combines the RGB LEDs in one single slim case, which is directly soldered onto a circuit. This case is either a circle or a square, and its size can be as small as one millimeter, so you can get a smaller pixel pitch and higher resolution displays. This is considered the mainstream of LED industry today. Even better ways of pixel packaging are chip on board technologies, encapsulation, micro LED, and mini LED, which can accommodate for wider color gamuts and have pixel pitches of under one millimeter. The image on an LED display is formed by varying the brightness of each LED and follows the principles of additive color mixing. The screen is built by connecting individual LED video panels together so it's scalable to a big range of sizes and shapes. There are various criteria used to evaluate an LED screen, such as pixel size, pixel pitch, IP rating, maximum brightness. First, I'll talk a bit about outdoor displays, and then we'll focus on indoor displays, since this is probably the context you'll be using LED walls for commercials and films. For outdoor displays, you need a higher maximum brightness and more panels since the viewing distance is big. The optimal viewing distance for your project is also very important and you should estimate it before renting an LED screen. The outdoor displays also have a higher IP rating. This parameter shows how well the screen is sealed against water and dust. However, they have a lower resolution. Now let's talk about indoor displays. As far as I researched this topic, it seems that pixel pitch is the most important feature you should look out for. The affordable LED screens producers that I found don't give out the pixel sizes that they're using, nor do they offer different pixel size options, just different pixel pitches and different panel builds. Depending on how you want to light your set, you should also decide whether or not you need a very bright screen. Let's clarify what the pixel pitch actually is. It is the distance in millimeters between individual pixels. It is measured from the center of one pixel to the center of an adjacent pixel. It is noted as capital PN, where N is the distance between the pixels. So for example, if we had an LED screen of pixel pitch 3.6 millimeters, we would rate it as P3.6. The smaller the pitch, the closer together the LED pixels are, the higher the pixel density, so the higher the resolution of the screen is. What we need to take from this is, the lower the pixel pitch, the higher the resolution. But as the pixel pitch decreases, the price goes up quite a lot. For example, the LED screens that we worked with were around 2000 euros per day for this size, and they were a 2.6 millimeter pixel pitch. Whereas for the set of the Mandalorian, they use LED screens with 1.9 millimeter pitch that cost more than 100 million US dollars. The trouble is that the cheaper the LED screen, the more artifacts it will cause on camera. There are two different types of artifacts that you can catch on camera. One are temporal light artifacts, which are flicker and stroboscopic effects. And two, moiré. <laughs> Sorry, let it go. I'll just go back. From the temporal light artifacts, what we're concerned with when it comes to LED screens is the flicker. Flicker appears as rolling thin dark lines in your footage. Flicker shows due to a combination between a certain frame rate and shutter speed set on the camera when shooting the screen. An LED wall can cause flicker because of two things. One, low pulse width modulation, and two, low refresh rate. Pulse width modulation, or PWM, is a method of sending a certain waveform to the pixels at a certain rate 
in order to modulate their brightness. The PWM adjusts the LED pixel's brightness to match the video data by very rapidly turning them on and off for very small periods of time. The period that the light is on is referred to as duty cycle. As the light is dimmed, the power consumption decreases, hence the duty cycle decreases. The duty cycle is 100% at full brightness and zero when it is off. Video cameras pick up PWM flicker at much higher frequencies than the human eye, so the camera safe PWM have frequencies somewhere between 5000 and 30,000 Hz. Let's say you're using 60 frames per second and you've got a red LED driven at 3840 Hz. The PWM will be used to adjust the brightness of the pixel to match the video data as shown in these graphs. refresh rate tells you how many times per second your screen displays data or in other words the maximum speed at which all the pixels can be updated for example if your video frame rate is set to 24 frames per second and the refresh rate is set to 48 hertz it means that every frame will be displayed twice the minimum led screen refresh rate is 400 hertz but it should be flicker free if the refresh rate is at least a thousand hertz you can get refresh rates as high as 10,000 hertz the overall refresh refresh rate is affected by several factors related to the build of the screen and the different components used, such as the efficiency of the sending software, the IC chip model, maximum number of pixels connected to an individual output, the total number of pixels connected to a controller, data speed of pixel protocol. Concluding with Flickr. If you're renting out an LED display for a shot, make sure you ask if it's camera safe and check the PWM and refresh rate specs. If you're experiencing LED display Flickr, change your camera's shutter speed and or frame rate the same way that you would if you were experiencing Flickr from a light source. Moray. I found a number of definitions for Moray. In short, this is what it looks like. And it occurs when the camera's fine sensor pixel pattern doesn't line up with the pattern of the LEDs. The lower the pitch of the LED screen, hence the higher the resolution, the less moiré trouble it's going to give you. A more expensive LED also means improvement in other build parameters that are going to decrease the chances of getting flicker as well. Assuming that there is a budget you need to stick to, chances are you might run into some moiré like we did. Here's what you can do to minimize or eliminate moiré during shooting. One. Rent a camera that has an optical low-pass filter or an OLPF. It's also known as an anti-aliasing filter and works by splitting a point of light into four individual points, hence increasing the chance of the colors being captured by one or more pixels in that vicinity, hence decreasing the moiré effect. The downside of this is a slightly lower image sharpness. Some examples of cameras that have built-in anti-aliasing filters are Sony a7 III, Sony FS7, Canon C300 Mark II. If for any reason you want to stick to a camera without an OLPF, you can. Rent a camera with a bigger sensor size. We've noticed a difference between Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K and Sigma FP. The Blackmagic had a bit more moiré. We tested it with the same camera settings, place of focus, camera angle, and focal length of lens. You can rent a more expensive camera. We were told by the guys from which we rented the LED screens that cinema level cameras like Ari or higher Sony's didn't have a moiré problem. I think it has to do with the quality of the sensor as well as the computing components quality. Also, the individual pixel size might make a difference as well. For example, a Red Epic has a full frame 19.4 megapixels Red Dragon sensor compared to a Sigma FP's 24.6 megapixels full frame sensor. So the Red Dragon's pixels are bigger therefore could line up better with the pattern of the LED in the display. If you've got your own camera that you're shooting with, which was also our case, and you're getting more A, you can try the following. Rent or buy an OLPF that you can mount in front of your camera sensor or in front of your lens. Mosaic Engineering makes OLPFs that are mounted in front of your sensor for a bunch of different camera models. Caprock Developments makes 2.5 inch diameter round filters or various size square filters for drop-in filter holder systems. The downside of these filters is that they can make your overall image less sharp. 
This is the same drawback as in the case of cameras which have built-in OLPFs. Rent an anti-Mara screen that you can place in front of your LED screen. There are a few different options that I found on the web. This is definitely an option I would check out because it's cost effective and you don't have to manually place anything in front of the camera sensor or the camera lens. I didn't see any standard sizes for these screens, so make sure you give yourself enough time to order a custom size before you shoot. If none of these options are available to you, then you can. Change the camera's position or shutter speed, the focal length of the lens, or the focus point. Simply moving the tripod slightly or doing a small tilt or pan might change the way in which the camera sensor pattern and LED pattern interact and decrease the moiré. You can change the shutter speed from the camera settings. You can try lenses of different focal lengths or slightly zoom in or out if you're using a zoom lens. Don't focus on the screen exactly. You can also increase the depth of field by closing down the aperture one or two stops if you need your LED screen to be in focus as well as your subject. Let's recap really quickly. <clears throat> Don't be discouraged by using an LED screen instead of a green screen, even if you can't afford a really expensive one. When renting one out, make sure you ask if it's camera safe and you check out the specs given out by the manufacturer. Here are the things you can try to minimize more. You can try to get a screen with as low a pixel pitch as possible. If you're renting a camera, you can see if you can get a camera with an internal OLPF suited for your project. If not, try a cinema level camera, which is more expensive, or at least one with a full frame sensor. Get an external OLPF for your camera or for your lenses. Get an anti moiré screen for the LED display. When you don't have any of the above options available and you're getting more in your image, you can. Change the angle of the camera to the LED screen. Adjust the camera's shutter speed. Change the focal length of the lens. Don't focus exactly on the screen. Shoot at a higher aperture. To this I'll add that if you have to choose between having flicker and moiré, it's better to make sure that there isn't any flicker. It's much easier to remove moiré in post-production than it is to remove flicker, if that's even possible. <coughs> If you've already filmed footage and you ended up having moiré, check out our video in the description below entitled How to Remove Lead Wall Moiré in DaVinci Resolve Studio 17. That's it for today. If you found this video useful, press like and subscribe. If you have any comments or additions, please write below and we'll try to answer as soon as possible. Yay! Mama boss. <laughs>